Well, welcome everyone. Good to see all of you here this morning. Uh, glad we have, have a large group here. If uh, you would, please join me this morning in uh, our call to worship. Uh, stand as you are able. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Please join us in singing number 77, How Great Thou Art. Savior God to thee, how great 
Thank you. You may be seated. Any of our young ones coming forward? He had to make a pit stop and say hello. And here is Little Miss Tickler. <laughs> you got a goldfish. <laughs> you can come sit down. Okay, you can stand there and I think that might just be appropriate for my question today. Do you all like to have parties? Have some balloons, confetti, all of those? Huh? Like birthday parties? Especially when it's your birthday party? Yeah. What about if it's... You get what? It's a little dark. Yeah, it is a little dark. It's a little bit cloudy out this morning. But do you like to go to somebody else's birthday party? Yeah. You do? No? Yeah. You do? Is it as much fun going to somebody else's birthday party as it is having your own? Mm, thinking about that one. <laughs> Not sure. Yeah, it is. Please sit down. <laughs> What, what about? <laughs> so, do you know that we can have a party with Jesus too? Do you know that? That there you can have a party with Jesus? Yeah. You do? Do you know that when we have a party with Him, His angels are there too? Yeah, yeah, his angels are there with us when we have a party with him. Yeah. What kind of party do you think that might be? Mommy's. Mommy's? Well, I'm sure there was a party for mommy, yeah. He has a party for each one of us. So Jesus is always happy for each one of us as we dedicate ourselves to him. So as long as we're looking to Jesus, he's happy and he's throwing a party. Yeah. Well, you going to go to children's church today? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you go have fun at children's church. Let's go get our stuff. Thank you, Pastor Marty. Yes, let's go get your stuff.
This morning's reading will come from Luke chapter 15, verses 3 through 10. When Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. As we look at this passage today, one of the things that I think we see here is, and and I had an interesting point made last night, when I asked someone what they saw first in these in this passage was well good luck finding 99 righteous people that haven't sinned I'm like well that's a good point i hadn't thought of that this way i hadn't looked at the scripture that way i had looked at it more in the in the realm of well there's 100 people inside a a body of christ and 99 are are faithful to him and they stick around they stay in the flock And one goes off and wanders off by themselves, and then the shepherd goes to go pull them back. But I had not thought about it as 99 that didn't sin, but that's an interesting way to look at it. But what I do like about this passage is when he talks about the shepherd. What does the shepherd do when he goes out to find the lost sheep? The one that has gone off on their own. He picks it up and puts it on his shoulders. Now, can you imagine that? I I mean, honestly, I can tell you, I can can see that, I can understand that. When I had gone to Romania on a mission trip at one point, several years ago, we happened to stop along a roadside for a picnic lunch. And we had brought our, our picnic lunches with us and laid out the blankets and the baskets and food and everything and you know there were no picnic tables we just stopped along the road and got out into a field but as we were sitting there having our lunch a shepherd comes by and he's got his you know modern shepherd clothes on i guess he had jeans and a long sleeve shirt and had his bag strapped across his shoulder is one one long strap and this bag dangling by him and he had his wooden walking stick and he's calling out to the sheep and the goats he had sheep and goats and he's walking across the hillside so i can imagine that this shepherd if one of those sheep ran off somewhere and he had to leave the group where they were at and go find him that this particular shepherd would have grabbed the sheep, put him up on his shoulders, and carried him back to the flock and set him back down and then started on his way again so that the, the sheep could graze. And that's what Jesus tells us in this particular passage is that the shepherd, him, will pick that sheep up and bring them back to the flock. But notice that uh, when he gets to the, the point of the woman with the lost coin, She's cleaning her entire house, looking for this lost coin. And she, she sweeps everything. I can just imagine, you know, today, you know, you're picking up every pot, vase, whatever, setting out, decorating. You're, you're pulling uh, things off the shelf to look back there. You're sweeping and climbing underneath. You're maybe even moving the couch and chairs around, trying to find this lost coin. And... You may think, well, it's just one coin. But see, in this day, that coin was equivalent to a full day's wage. 
So imagine if you lost something that was the equivalent of a full day's wage. You've worked all week, you get your paycheck at the end of the week, but whatever was equivalent to one-fifth of that is gone. You've lost it. Well, it's, it's a value, right? So you, you start looking through the closets, you're looking through dresser drawers, you're trying to find what, it has, what has been lost. Thus, guys, we'd be looking through the garage and the shed and everything else looking for it, right? If, especially if it was a tool that was equivalent to a full day's wage. So he says this woman looks for all of it and then she finds it. In both cases, he talks about the shepherd and the woman who lost a coin. They rejoice. They pull their friends together to rejoice. They want to come and rejoice together. So they want to celebrate with, with everyone around them, all of their friends, their family. If we go a little further in Luke, the next passage, the next parable Jesus tells is the parable of the prodigal son. And we all know that story. Two sons, the younger one decides, I want my inheritance now. I want to go off to the city and make a name for myself. And the father gives him this inheritance. He goes off. Loses everything, squanders it. In fact, to the, <clears throat> to the point that he's, he's eating with the pigs. He finally says, enough's enough. Even the servants in my father's house have more food to eat than I do. I'm going to go back to my father and beg forgiveness. And I will even become a servant to him, not even a son. And of course, when he gets back... As the father sees him approaching a long way off, he runs to grab him, give him a hug, welcome him home. And then he tells the servants, go kill the fatted calf. Let's have a big celebration and put the finest robe on him and put a, a ring back on his finger. Now, rings for us probably don't mean a whole lot. I mean, we have our wedding bands, with do, which do. But if we're wearing other rings, they're usually decorative, right? They're more because we want to wear them. Maybe we have a class ring or something, but most of the time those rings are just decoration. But in their case, during that time, that ring meant that the son could go certify transactions on behalf of the father. He could go sign contracts and seal them with his ring. So the father didn't just welcome him back and, and make him a servant as he thought. He actually made him a son again, a representative of his again. What we see in all three of these cases is that there was a celebration. But what we see particularly with those first two that Jesus says the rejoicing in heaven will be greater than this. And in fact, he says that you, there will be a celebration and an awesome rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God. Now, he didn't say in the presence of one or two angels, the angels, meaning all of them. And what is the occasion? When one sinner repents and comes to Christ. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought that when we find a wayward soul and we bring them into Christ and they're baptized into the body, that the entire host of heaven is celebrating? They're rejoicing. And oh, by the way, we're able to rejoice with them because we're in the presence of the one that has come home, that has come back to God. It's like the prodigal son that comes home. It's like the sheep that's been lost and brought back in. It's like the coin that's been found. There's a celebration. And God celebrates with us. Perhaps another analogy would be this. If you're a, a football fan and your team wins the Super Bowl, Imagine you're one of the players there on the field and you're celebrating winning the Super Bowl. You're in the presence of the owner 
who's sitting in the owner's box or perhaps has made his way to the field, but you have 70,000, maybe 80,000 people all around in the stadium that's yelling and screaming and celebrating with you. That's the way I think about when it says that God in the presence of it, all of his angels, there is this rejoicing and celebration. Maybe the question for us is, do we celebrate enough? Not, do we celebrate too much? Do we celebrate enough that a wayward soul has come home? Do we celebrate enough that uh, our rebirth day? What was the day that you were baptized and brought into the body of Christ? Or perhaps the day that you had recommitted do you celebrate that day? Do you even know what that day is? But the angels in heaven rejoiced on that day with you when that happened. And if you rejoice and, and celebrate that day again, the angels in heaven will continue to rejoice and be glad and celebrate with you. Can you imagine with all of us if we had all those different days that, that we had committed to Christ and that we celebrated that day? How many days in the year would we be celebrating? A lot. A lot of days, right? Because the odds of all of us having that, celebrating that day at the same time and because we were all baptized on the same day is pretty slim, isn't it? But if we celebrated each day that each person was baptized, if we celebrate joyously on the days that we can bring somebody new in and baptize them into the body, it's a great celebration and we would be celebrating a whole lot more. And we would have a much more joyous attitude toward life rather than the drudgery that we think of and, well, i got to go to work today and... Well, I, I got to go run this errand today, and well, I've got this task before me today. Believe me, I know how that is. I have those thoughts myself, and thinking, okay, well, today I've got to do A, B, C, and if I don't get C done today, it goes to tomorrow, and then it's C, D, and E, and we we go through life that way, though, don't we? And I know we're told that we should be joyous every day, but if we think about every day as a celebration because someone new is coming into the body of Christ that day, it makes the day a whole lot happier, doesn't it? So my challenge to you this week is find a reason to celebrate. And if no other reason, celebrate the fact that you have been saved. Celebrate the fact that you are in the body of Christ. But the challenge also includes trying to find someone else that needs to be saved and bring them in so we can celebrate with them and again celebrate in the presence of the angels. That we can be surrounded by the host of heaven celebrating bringing another soul into the kingdom. I think that celebration is something God so looks forward to. And he wants our hearts to be joyous. And he wants us to celebrate the expansion of his kingdom every day. If you would, bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to celebrate. To celebrate Another soul coming to you, coming to you, coming to, into your kingdom, someone else accepting your son, Jesus Christ. But God, in the absence of that happening and us knowing who they are, we celebrate our own coming to you, our own commitment to you. And God, we ask that you be, uh, help us to be mindful at all times that we are part of your kingdom and that you have made a promise that we will be in your kingdom forever. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
As you are able, let's please stand and sing uh, our song, number 2029, from The Faith We Sing, and it's titled, Praise to the Lord. God has blessed each of us richly, both with material and spiritual blessings. As we offer our gifts this morning, may we rejoice in the blessings we receive from God. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this offering. We bless, ask that you bless those who will make the decisions on how these funds may be spent. And God, we ask that you show each one of us your plan and how you are working within this congregation and how all of this, these funds, may go into executing your plan. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would please stand and as we sing honor and praise number 2018. seated. If you would bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to worship you, to praise you, and God, to celebrate with you. God, we thank you for all of your many blessings, so many that we often cannot count. But God, we have concerns where we have folks within the body here who have recently gone through surgery or perhaps are awaiting surgery. And we ask that you be with them and be with those who will be conducting the surgery, the medical staffs, and, and even the administration folks as they go to process through this. And be with those who have have re rehabilitation to go through and, and with the, the folks that will be administering it, help them to be strengthened and regain their health. And God, those who have been sick and ill, we ask that you be with them and guide them and, and that you bring them back to full health. And God, we ask for those that perhaps are a little... Uh, hesitant to come and join us here in person that you would let them know that they're certainly most welcome here and that we would love to see them. And God, we ask that you 
alleviate some of their hesitancy. And God, we are thankful for the joys that we, where we can celebrate those events and, and updates, uh, different sporting events and, and uh, school events, music events, plays, all of those things that we celebrate with our kids and we, we gain joy from, we, we give you the thanks for those. God, we ask that you continue to be with us and guide us as we go forward this week, that you fill us with your spirit and that you would, uh, that, that you would show us your plan and how we can go about being part of it. God, we're thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, for the hope and the salvation that we have through him. Be with us now as we pray these words that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as you go this week, go to celebrate. Go to celebrate your life with Christ, your eternal life with God. Amen. We have a few announcements to make this morning. And there's one that's not going to be on here, but I'll get to it in a minute. So uh, we certainly have our, our Sunday school immediately following service, as well as our informal worship on Saturday evenings at 5 p.m. Um, our Welcome Back event, September 19th, we're, again, invite your neighbors, invite your friends, invite your families, invite anyone that, that you can to come and join us for that. Uh, we anticipate uh, having our normal 845 worship and then a, uh, a fun and games uh, for the kids and even for those who are kid, kids at heart to go out in, in the courtyard here and, and, and be able to uh, enjoy some games. We will also have some uh, individually packaged snacks and uh, some drinks for everyone. Our Daniel Bible study wraps up this week uh, on Wednesday evening. We wrap up with chapter 12. Uh, once that is done, and I know it's not part of the announcement, but we will uh, start Revelation. I'm targeting September 22nd as the day that we will start that. And so that will be in the announcements again next week and remind you of that. Uh, we would love to have each and every one of you part of our prayer group. As you know, we have the larger group uh, of, of the church, the membership. And then we have uh, folks that are dedicated to receiving the prayer uh, requests and praying over those throughout the week. So if you're not part of that group, let us know, and we'd love to have you as part of that. Um, continue to share these posts on social media. Share with all your friends. I'm sure across all of us, that means we're reaching out to thousands of people. And so continue to share those across your social media. Um, it, it again, it, it may sound odd, but it's one of these new forms of evangelism. It's a new form of planting seeds, of getting God's word in front of others. We have a food box that will be put out front here shortly. Uh, it's almost completed and, and almost ready to be, be put out here. So again, if you're uh, able, uh, please consider bringing in some non-perishables to go in it. Again, those non-perishables will go in here by the office as opposed to the ones uh, back here. Uh, Monday night at 7 p.m. we have a trustees meeting just as a reminder. So that will be here this Monday. And then on September 7th, Tuesday, the day following our, our Labor Day, uh, we'll have a, a nurture committee meeting here at 7 p.m. And now for the announcement that's not up there. Um, for those of you that don't know, and I'm going to move over here. For those of you that don't know, there was a, uh, you, I'm sure you know of the governor's edict that came out uh, earlier this week, that beginning tomorrow. And when you go into public places, uh, you're supposed to be wearing a mask again. Believe me, none of us I know want to do that. I don't like doing it. I don't want to do that. But it is what it is. 
So yesterday we met, the church council met, because Friday we also received an email from the conference that was telling us we need to come together, determine how we're going to go about things. So uh, the council and, and I met um, yesterday, and basically the directives that, that we came up with was, one, we're going to strongly recommend that you wear a mask when you come in. Um, again, continue social distancing. Uh, we do have disposable masks in the back now that we have available. So if you forgot your mask or you uh, didn't initially think you wanted to wear a mask, but then you decided at the last minute you want one, we've got some available. Please feel free to take one. Uh, I'm hesitant to say this, but that doesn't mean that we're mandating them. Um, but we would like to see you wearing masks when we're in here. Um, again, at least coming in and going out. Socially distance, you all have been doing a great job, even though we removed the ropes, you've been doing a great job of continuing to socially distance, and that's great. Um, also, we had discussed the fact that we're up here, we're more than the 25 feet away, so we can remove our masks safely while we're here. That's why you will see me without a mask on up here, unless I'm coming in close contact with some of you, the children, or when I walk uh, amongst you, I'll put my mask back on. Also, uh, the choir, again, we're going to, we're looking to restart the choir, and part of that will be, again, the, the group that's going to be the choir, uh, being comfortable with, you know, vaccinated, not vaccinated, whatever, wearing masks, not wearing masks, it's going to be the choir, we'll, we'll work through that. Um, we're, as a council, we believe that that's the choir's decision, individually, each person making that choice. Uh, we're trying not to be uh, overly uh, imposing, but also asking you to make wise decisions as we go forward. Um, we will continue and, and have our, our September 19th, and we will again make some announcements regarding uh, that as we go forward and asking people that come in, especially those who are not normally here, uh, requesting that they wear masks. Again, it's, it's a very strong recommendation and not a mandate. So we will post uh, these, this guidance uh, in uh, our, on, on our social media, so you can see it there, and we will also uh, send out an email to the larger membership group uh, that will let them know. Unfortunately, it's, uh, I think, a little too late to get it into our newsletter, but please, uh, as you talk to folks, uh, let them know that this is the new uh, guidance. Uh, again, I will say, I don't like having to wear a mask, I don't want to wear a mask, but I also don't want to take the chance that I may be a reason that somebody else gets sick, and especially if they have underlying health conditions where it can be, uh, could be deadly, and I don't want to be part of, of the cause. So with that, everyone, please go in peace. <laughs>